Hey everyone, this is Derek, and this is section 5.4, quadratics, and this time standard form. And so last time uh, we looked at vertex form, which is right here, and that should be a minus. Um, and again, some books will call this one standard form. For me, I'm used to calling this version standard form, this version vertex form. So that's just the language I will use. Um, so when we're in standard form of a parabola, that's where we can use like the quadratic formula for solving pretty easy. That's the A, B, and C. And the vertex is the first part of the quadratic formula. It's the negative B without the plus or minus part of the root. Negative B over 2A is the x corner of the vertex. And the reason is the plus or minus the root is giving you x-intercepts on either side of the vertex. So if we um, if we have if we're in standard form, we can just plug right into this, get our x coordinate um, of our vertex. Once we know x, we can plug that back into the original. That's what this is saying, and then that gives us the y coordinate of the vertex. So it's another way of getting h k. So a few more things here. Uh, parabolas open up if a is greater than zero. Um, we've seen that with positive x squared, they open up. Um, negative x squared, they open down. Uh, to find x-intercepts, we let y equal zero, and we can either factor, use the quadratic formula, or finish completing the square, um, you know, whatever seems most convenient. But the important thing is y is zero for x-intercepts, and then to find the y-intercept, we let x equal zero. Uh, so let's look at that with some examples. So I think I will show this one um, two ways. So first, let me introduce this idea of x equals negative b over 2a as a way to get the, um, the vertex from standard form. So with this, x would be, uh, negative b would be negative eight over two times one. So that would be negative eight over two, which is negative four. So that's the x coordinate of the vertex. In other words, that is my, my h and my k that I'm finding. And I now know h is <coughs> negative four. And then to find k, I'll find f of negative 4. So we'll just plug this back in. And that will be negative 4 quantity squared plus 8 times negative 4 plus 13. So cleaning that up, 16 minus 32 plus 13, 29 minus 32, I think that is negative 3. And so that would be my k or my y coordinate of the vertex. And then here I can see there's the A is one, and so that's gonna hold true. Um, it, we know the shape, it's gonna be our over one up, one over one up three, because um, there's no stretch and there's no negative on it. Um, so that gives us a vertex and our shape. So we are here at <coughs> uh, X is negative four, Y is negative three. And then I can just graph up from there. So there's our graph. I mean, kind of look at the x-intercepts and there's something not nice. So that tells me I'm probably gonna end up having to use quadratic formula on this. Um, and then what else am I supposed to find? Find the axis of symmetry. So that would be this right here. So that is x equals negative four. Again, x equals makes it an equation, not just a floating negative four. Unless of course the box has x equals in front of it, then you get to type the negative four. Uh, y-intercept, that one's easy. Let's do that first. That just means we find f of 0. So that would be 0 squared uh, plus 8 times 0 plus 13. And so when we're in standard form, this number on the end, that's always going to be your y-intercept. So your y-intercept for this one is um, at 0 and then 13. And then for the... Um, Oh, for this one, we did not have to find the x-intercept. Excellent. I'm just looking at my notes and going, okay, sweet. We don't have to do it this time. We will in a second. But so for this example, that would be it. That's right. I remember I was going to show you on this one. Uh, I got distracted by the x-intercepts. Um, the way that I did this in the last section, when we did uh, vertex form, we did f of x equals x squared plus 8x. We would go half of eight would be four, and then squared would be 16, plus 16 minus 16, and then that plus 13 there on the end. 
that factors. So it's going to be x plus 4 squared, and then minus 16 plus 13 is minus 3. And my vertex is at negative 4, negative 3. Um, I feel like I actually suffered less doing it this way than I did doing it that way. So even though completing the square is confusing and I made some mentions of witchcraft going on over here, um, it's actually, once you get it down, the math is actually pretty straightforward. I feel like there's a lot more room for me to screw it up in the steps on that one. So there's a plug for completing the square. That said, this next one turns out where there's fractions and then it's like you would not want to complete the square. And then this becomes probably the easier method. Okay, so we're looking again for vertex, axis, symmetry, and y-intercept. So y-intercept, let's knock that one out, because when x is 0, uh, y is negative 4. So that's done. Um, and now we, x, uh, the axis of symmetry will come from the vertex, so we pretty much need to find the vertex. Um, looking at this one, I wouldn't probably go the way that I did on the last one. And the reason is where I just showed that at the end where I completed the square. Because once you try to go half of three, it's three halves squared is nine fourths. And then you got fractions everywhere and no one really likes that. Um, we're still gonna have fractions, but at least we're not completing the square with them. So let's go uh, X equals negative B. So negative three over two A. So two over negative one. And that is three halves. So our X coordinate of our vertex is three halves. So now we have to find F of three halves which is just not that great, but it's what we got. And so here this would go nine fourths and negative because the negative is in front of the X, so it's squaring and then negating second. It's not in parentheses, so it is a negative value. Three times three, and this is like three over one, so this would be plus nine, one times two makes two and then minus four. And then there, let's get common denominator of four going everywhere. So we'll do four over four right here. So then this is negative nine fourths plus 18 fourths minus uh, 16 fourths. And that would be, let's see, that would leave two and then that down seven. So it equals negative seven fourths. So the vertex is going to be at um, 3 halves and negative 7 fourths. And then axis of symmetry, always the uh, x coordinate vertex, so that would be x equals 3 halves. Okay, and then these are the problems where we have to find both the x and the y intercepts. So here we're supposed to uh, sketch a graph of the quadratic. Um, we give the vertex, axis, symmetry, and intercepts. If there are no intercepts, <clears throat> and that can happen, right, if it's opening up above the axis or opening down below the axis, uh, then enter D and E. So we could do this, um, you know, we could do negative B over 2A. So we get X equals uh, negative B, so negative 4 over 2 times 1, so that makes negative 2. And then plug that back in, um, and we would get, let's see, f of negative 2 be negative 2 squared and then plus 4 times negative 2 and this time it's squared because x is negative 2 and x itself is being squared so that means negative 2 times negative 2 and minus 2 so that would be 4 minus 8 and then minus 2 so that is negative 6 so our vertex is at negative 2 negative 6 and again, I'll just slip right up here with it real quick. X squared plus 4X, half of 4 is 2 squared makes 4 again. So plus 4 minus 4 minus 2. Factor this, X plus 2 squared minus 6. And again, that seemed easier to me than doing all this. I also hate kind of grinding through calculations. So I guess that would be my preference. Um, axis symmetry, that would be, oh, this time it does have the x equals on this particular problem, so there'd be a box there. And that time you get to just type the negative 2. Y-intercept, <clears throat> again, when x is 0, it's that value on the end, negative 2. And then x-intercepts and your answer uh, lowest to highest. So 
if I already have this vertex form right here, I can just say x plus two quantity squared minus six equals zero, because the square is like almost, it's already completed. I'm just popping this six over, and then x plus two squared equals six, root both sides and get x plus two equals plus or minus square root six, and then bring the two over. So negative two plus or minus root six. Um, you could also from here plug it in the quadratic formula. It will be more work than this and you'll have to reduce it and it will suck a little bit. Um, this was the easiest way to go, so I try to pick the easy version. That said, you're welcome to use quadratic if that is more comfortable for you. Um, so the way that this one should enter the answers, highest to lowest, is just gonna be like a big box and it's looking for ordered pair and the, the lowest one is going to be the x is negative 2 minus root 6 in this case, comma 0, because that would be your first x-intercept, and then um, negative 2 plus root 6, that's your second x value, comma 0. So that answer entry is a little bit tricky. Think about it, if you had gotten, you know, 1 and 5 as your intercepts, you'd go 1 comma 0, 5 comma 0. That's all we're doing. It's just it has not very nice numbers. Um, and then I guess I should go back and graph. So negative 2, negative 6 is my vertex. And y intercepts at negative 2. Um, so that would be one way to get that graphed. And I, I think on the computer, again, you just need the vertex and the point. should end up looking about like that. Okay, so for this last one, um, this time there's a coefficient on there. It would actually factor pretty decent, but I think I will just do this one as x equals negative b over 2a. So negative 4 over 2 times 2 would be negative 4 over 4 or negative 1. And then f of negative 1, that's going to equal 2 negative 1 squared plus 4 negative 1 plus 5. So that will be uh, 2 minus 4 plus 5. 2 and 5 is 7 minus 4 um, or 3. So our vertex is going to be x is negative 1 or h and our k is 3. So x is negative 1, k is 3 is right there. Um, axis of symmetry, so x equals up has that, so that will be a box and negative 1. Uh, the y-intercept, if the x's are 0, the y-intercept is 5. So now we have that one, and that finishes off our graph. Um, that makes sense because this has a 2 in front, right? So we'd have a stretch, so it'd be over 1, up 2. So once we realize that, the x-intercepts, well, they're not, that's going to be D and E because there are none. Um, if you went to solve it, it would come up negative under the radical, telling you that um, th there weren't x-intercepts. Okay, and then there's a little bit more to this one. So then f of x is increasing on the intervals, so that would be from negative one to infinity. Decreasing on the intervals, that would be from negative infinity to negative one. Remember, we say that in terms of the x values it's happening on, not how high or low it got. Um, it has a maximum value. So in this case, the maximum goes to infinity, so that's a DNE. And then f of x has a minimum at x equals. So the minimum is occurring at x equals negative 1. And let's see. The domain is all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity. And then lastly, the range. So it looks like the low point is at 3. So that would be from 3 inclusive and then to infinity.